Well, good morning, Grace people. It's good to see you guys here as per always, but this time I don't have a guitar slung around my neck, so do I look taller? Maybe. And good morning to all of you who are joining us online. Today we are continuing on in our Seasons series. Some of you know, but, but many of you don't, that the whole reason we're doing this series on seasons, different stages of life, and the transitions in between are actually a response to what you told us. A few years ago, we did a congregational survey with a consulting group, and part of what came out was that as far as discipleship goes, uh, people get lost in transition. Going from one season to the next is like, okay, what, is, what does discipleship look like now? What does it look like from going to uh, single, to married, to the working world, to aging parents, to retired? Uh, wh- what do all these look like? So that's, that's why we're going into this. And, and we've also got these meetups, and our hope is that through this series, we'll both increase connection to God, and we'll be increasing your connection to each other, because that is super important, um, because along with the Holy Spirit, we're, we're the ones who are going to help each other get through these seasons. Well, I had an epiphany about six months ago. Uh, Once again, I was trying to buckle down on my Bible reading and journaling habit, and I was like, why isn't this working? And it just finally struck me that I started that habit in college and carried it through in seminary. And one thing that was very important to note about those seasons, I was a single dude. I had like no responsibilities except to like wake up and shower if I wanted. But then, by the grace of God, I got married, and, and once I got married, it was like, wow, I wake up in the morning, there's a person here that I, like, enjoy, and we just would start talking, and it's like, okay, and then we had a kid, and then we had another kid, and so trying to sit down and have any quiet moment at all with the Lord or just with myself becomes increasingly difficult. Uh, you can imagine why. So uh, since then, my wife and I have been talking, we just still haven't made that like intentional plan. Like, what is our discipleship going to look like in this season? So I'm, I'm telling you right now, the problem is not yet solved. So we're all in this together. If you're in a transition, you're trying to figure out discipleship. It's not just you. It's me too. Uh, for me, looking back, describing those, you know, from single to married to having kids were definitely the biggest season changes I had. And maybe you're in one of those seasons, or just in in any season where you're not sure what discipleship is supposed to look like, Uh, or perhaps you're in one of those transitional places. And those are my, my new favorite word. Those are liminal spaces. Liminal spaces are places of transition where you're not quite here anymore, but you haven't gotten there yet, and so you're in between. And I think the best example of that is being in an airport. Like, nobody goes to the airport just to hang out. Anybody? Maybe you do. I don't know. But in general, the reason you go to the airport is because you're trying to get somewhere else, and my friend Adam calls it the place no one wants to be. And that is pretty accurate. Um, But regarding liminal spaces, an author, Carmen Joy Imes, in her book, Bearing God's Name, uh, has this to say. And it's a pretty lengthy excerpt, but I think it's really worth it. For Israel, the wilderness journey from Egypt to Canaan is liminal space. Far more than just a place to pass through, it is the workshop of Israel's becoming. The wilderness is their temporary destination that makes them who they are. Liminal places always do this. They change us. Okay, maybe not the airport. The Israelites have been liberated from slavery in Egypt, but they have not yet arrived at their final destination. Everything they know about who they are, how to survive, and what is expected of them is stripped away on that fateful night when they make their escape leaving them vulnerable and uncertain. Sure, their escape is good news. The problem is they don't know how to live under these new arrangements. No doubt they long imagined life in freedom, but life on the way to freedom? That's something else altogether. Wilderness survival skills don't come naturally to them, but God is in no hurry to lead them out of liminal space and into the land he promised to give them. They're not ready yet. A little bit more. Into their situation of acute need, Yahweh speaks. He answers the basic questions of human existence in surprising new ways, offering himself as the solution to their needs for leadership, guidance, protection, and provision, and revealing his name as the key to their identity and vocation as his people. Yahweh invites them to begin walking in a new direction by trusting him. So Israel is being shaped 
in their liminal season in the wilderness. And I've found uh, that to be true in my seasons too. When I've, when I've sat back and, and thought through it and then also allowing God to work in those seasons, I've never gone from one stage to the other without being changed in some way. Um, often when we are in the, the unknown uncertainty, uh, it feels kind of like a dark winter season. It's like, when is the light going to shine? Um, and a few years ago, I wrote a song called First Day of Spring, uh, which I'll play for you now. No, I won't. But, it, uh, but you can look it up. It's on YouTube, Dan Lugo. It's called First Day of Spring, and it just, as best as I could, puts to word the feeling of coming out of one of these winters into spring. So what are some common transitions? We're talking through over, the, over the, these weeks, the four weeks of the series, we're talking through different, we're kind of focusing on different age groups and seasons. So last week, Pastor Angie spoke on uh, children, being children and having faith like children in this season. So this week, kind of going like high school to married-ish, young adult-ish, because I'm still a young adult. No. <laughs> so what are some common transitions here? So we got high school to college, college to the working world, single to dating, dating to single, single to dating, dating to single, single to dating, dating to single, single to dating, and hopefully maybe engaged, if that's the goal, you know, and then from engaged to married, sometimes, usually, but not always for some people. Uh, For some, they go from single to single parenting. Uh, maybe uh, once married, for some, it's, it's to wanting kids, to either having or not having kids. Uh, and then some go from uh, married to unmarried or widowed. You know, each of these seasons, which there, there's just a ton right there, which I think are all represented by our congregation. Each of these seasons and the liminal spaces between these transitions uh, each come with their own questions. Some examples who, what do I want to be? That's a big question put, especially on the, the high school age. What do I want to be and into college? What am I going to do next? Who do I want to be? Who are my people? Am I making a difference? Is he or she the one? Am I the one? Do I even want to be married? Is having kids really the way the human race has gone on for all these years? Because have you had kids before? <laughs> Should we have one more? And uh, will we ever have our own kids? These are all different questions uh, that happen in these seasons and the spaces in between. And what I've found is is kind of the law, what people say you have to have in this time, is you must have a perfect plan and complete it perfectly. That's the goal. That's the goal for you if you're in high school, so good luck. Uh, But the truth is you don't need a perfect plan because you won't complete it perfectly. In fact, you can't. It's impossible. And you'd be surprised to find out that many people who give up everything perfection realize too late that that's not actually what they want. Like maybe it was what they wanted, but in going through the process of going through life, we change and our desires change. The things we want change. And so they get there and they finally get that thing. It's like, oh, maybe this wasn't it. We change, we grow, and in each season and in these liminal spaces, it's important to know that we, we are becoming And if we let God guide us through, we're better for it because what we're doing is not the most important thing in any of these seasons or spaces. But who we're becoming becomes the ultimate question. And the gospel here, God is for you. And and you don't have to be perfect. Jesus does that for you. Well, what's gotten me through each space and season? Because obviously I'm here and I'm not like a complete train wreck. Why are you laughing? (laughs) What's gotten me through each space and season are family, friends, mentors who have been in each season before, uh, prayer, and honestly, knowing scripture. And here's why the scripture helps so much. Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season. Whatever its season it is for that tree. It, it yields fruit. 
I think in my life, a good example is uh, delighting in 1 Corinthians 13, which is kind of seen as the like marriage love chapter. Um, but it's so much more than that when, when Paul describes love. And uh, I haven't found recently, you know, in the past four years as, as a parent especially, the, the reminders that love is patient. It is kind. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Like, I have to remind myself and say, Holy Spirit, do that in me, because right now I am impatient, I am furious and about to go off the handle, uh, I'm keeping up a, a record of wrongs that my children commit, as if, you know, they're not children, but they're doing it to hurt me, you know, and I don't want to resent my kids, so Holy Spirit, help me. That's an example of how just having Scripture in us uh, can cause us to, to turn to the Lord and say, help, please. So if you want to yield fruit, delight in the law of the Lord and meditate on it. You know, you are what you eat, right? Well, let me ask this. How can we be disciples through two big questions in these seasons? And really, I think across seasons, but I find it especially pertinent here. One is a question of being disciples, which is, do I even believe this? And one is a question of making disciples, how do I share my faith with others? And these are just two questions that I, I, I keep hearing come up um, for folks in this age group. So I'm going to share some experiences, but I'm not going to have comprehensive answers. There aren't any silver bullets here that are going to uh, fix the problem, as it were. But that's why we're having uh, these meetups, because they are opportunities for conversation with people in the same stage. You could say, okay, like, how are we all doing here, and what can we do uh, to, to understand better? So first, do I even believe this? I went through a faith crisis, like a serious faith crisis, after seminary, which is a pretty interesting time to do it. Um, but it was, it was then, and, and it happened about every two years after that. Um, it's probably six or eight years. And now it's, it's been a while since that happened, but I wouldn't be surprised if it were to happen again. Um, and that's because while faith is a gift, believing is hard. Faith is a gift. Believing is hard. So faith is a gift. We're brought to faith by God, and it's a miracle. We look in Matthew chapter 16. Uh, Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? And they replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, still others say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And then Jesus asks, I think, the pinnacle question of discipleship, which is, who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered, you're the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this wasn't revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. It was revealed to Peter by the Father, and the Holy Spirit is the one who births faith in us today. But while faith is a gift, like I said, believing is hard, and, and believing is a process. For some of us, we need to answer some pretty serious questions. Like you said, uh, I, think, I think it was you, Darren, who said earlier this week, Doubting Thomas. He gets a bad name. I think we'd rather just call him Honest Thomas. He just had some good questions. Um, I love that this past week in Refuge, we started a series called Counterfeit. And the big question that we're asking all the students uh, is, is my faith really mine? Is this, is this my, do I believe it? Is this, am I riding off my parents' coattails? Or is this something just because I've been part of the church? Or is this, is this like something I believe? And I think that's an excellent question to start asking. Um, with those questions is, is acknowledging, what are my questions? What are my questions about faith? If, if, if you're not at the point of, of believing yet, there's probably some roadblocks, some obstacles, some questions. So it's saying, okay, so what, what questions do I have? And, and who can I ask them to? Some of those questions might have to do with faith. And it, usually it's faith and something. Like how do these things uh, either intersect or how are they in conflict? So faith and history, faith and science, faith and sociology, faith and other religions. How do these, they, if they seem incompatible, that becomes a question. How does this work? And so I think it's important to know who's qualified to answer these questions. I barely ever make sweeping statements, but here's one. Not the internet. 
probably not the best place to go, just to, to random figureheads who have no interest in your life or your well-being, uh, but to find people that you trust, people who are invested in your life. Even it's better, if it's a, it's a faith question, find people who have successfully followed Jesus their whole life. It's like, okay, how did you deal with this? Because there's no way you've gone through life without any questions. So let's, let's talk it out. So that's, that's a big part of the, do I even believe this question? And it's working to find those answers. The other big question that I find uh, people ask is, if they've, if they've got that faith, it's how do I share my faith with others? How do I share faith with the, the folks I go to school with, uh, with my college roommate, with my, my uh, coworkers? Um, how do I do this? And I've had some success with this. Uh, definitely don't have the gift of evangelism. People aren't just coming to Jesus left and right every time I'm in the room. Um, I wish that were the case, and I've prayed for that gift of evangelism. Um, but I have been able to share my faith pretty successfully with others, and it starts with praying for opportunities. It's just saying, God, I would love a chance to talk about you, so if you could just make that happen, open a door, that'd be great. Um, and it's been amazing how many times that's actually happened. Um, Next is being genuinely curious. I think there was a, um, for a while, it was kind of the on trend or whatever that it was like you ask questions in order to evangelize to someone and like they say something and that's, that's your cue, you know, that's your chance to break in and, and bring the gospel. Um, and I've found that really doesn't work very well. Um, but if you are genuinely curious in people, if you just love people and ask questions and, and if you're interested in their faith story and ask, uh, sometimes it is reciprocal. Sometimes it's not, but the more you're curious, and it's not an agenda that you have, but it's just like you just want to get to know people. Um, it's amazing how much <laughs> when you care about people, they want to care about you. Wow. Uh, the next one is, so let's say you get an opportunity to talk about God. That door has opened up. Um, I found it's more helpful to describe God rather than defend God. God doesn't call us to defend him. He really doesn't need defense. He's the God of all creation and the God of the universe. He created all things. He knows the ending. Uh, in fact, he's written it. We don't have to defend him. Uh, but if you can describe, like, why are you a Christian? What do you love about God? Like, what's, what's the personality of Jesus that you know? Because what I hear on the street is not good. Um, if you can describe, describe God and, and having practiced just telling a little bit of your faith story and, and those things of like, what is it about God that I find compelling? That, that's really helpful when that opportunity comes. And then one of our values here is invite first and next steps with Jesus. So invite a next step. What could that be? It's going to be different for everybody. You can invite somebody to come and eat with you. Uh, just like, hey, we've talked about some things that work sometimes, but I, I, I'd really love to have a more, deeper conversation. You want to just go get lunch, you know, on a lunch hour? Let's go do that together. Um, it might be reading the Bible together. If somebody's like kind of interested, it's like, hey, have you ever read like the stories of Jesus? Uh, not, you know, something, no, not since I was a kid. Okay. How about we read Mark together? It's the shortest gospel, but it's a story of Jesus. And uh, let's read a few chapters, talk about, or talk about it, or read a chapter, or come together, whatever, and just tell each other what we see. It's not even studying, it's just reading. You can send them resources. I've met people at the park before and we've exchanged information and they've asked questions about certain things. They say, hey, well, here's something I found about Christian parenting I think would be helpful um, or whatever that might be. But just following up is really important. And like, hey, did you check that out? Hey, what are you thinking? Did you, did you want to come to church sometime? Like, just put that out there. I was in sales for a long time, so I can ask all the questions. Um, but I've also learned if you don't ask for the sale, you never get it. And so if, you'd like, if you're just like, oh, everybody doesn't want to come to church because the culture hates the church and everybody hates Jesus, uh, you've, already, you've already lost. Um, we're not selling people Jesus, so don't hear me saying that. But we are uh, giving just a, we're, if you're excited about something, tell them. Like if you're like, hey, I'd love for you to come visit Community of Grace because it's great to be in a grace-filled community. Uh, you'd be surprised how many people would be like, okay. Thanks. And you're like, I should have done this a long time ago. Why didn't I listen to Dan? <laughs> and the last thing that I can see is if you, if you, you like have a good relationship with somebody and you're, you're thinking about inviting next steps, but you just don't know what to say, ask for help. Just ask somebody who's been there. Ask somebody who's had those conversations and say, how would you do this? Or how would you, I've got this person at work and I'm just not sure what to say and just bounce some ideas off each other because we can do that. We're a community. 
So that's, that's a lot about sharing our faith. I think it's really important because people are looking for, for something solid to believe in. Um, and we have it. Life in Jesus is super solid. Um, not without its bumps, but it's solid. The reality is, as we go through seasons of life, uh, life just changes and it keeps on changing. And we're going to find ourselves in those liminal spaces, too, of transition where we're changing. What I found is helpful is to hold on to what's consistent, and that's God is for you. So if you're struggling to believe, then make sure to ask those questions to trusted people who have fought the good fight for a long time. Uh, And when you need to, lean on the faith of others. And what that means is like, hey, I'm having trouble believing this right now, but I really trust you, and you seem to be, have a really good grasp on faith, so I'm going to believe right now because you believe. Uh, and we could do that for a season. If you're already a disciple of Jesus, which I know many in this room are, then sharing your faith uh, is, is, you know, open the door for that by praying for those opportunities. Be curious of others, describe your life with God, and invite next steps with Jesus. Uh, the reality is, we're, you know, it sounds it's like, okay, well, there's the plan, right? We don't have to follow the plan perfectly. We're, all, we're not going to get it perfect. We're all in this together imperfectly. But that's why we get to be a community of grace. Amen? All right. Would you pray with me? Father God, our hearts and our lives are yours. And you've brought us into this place today because you have a word for us. I pray that your word, uh, as it does, will, will not return to you void, but it will accomplish its purpose for which you sent it. Move in our hearts. Help us to take from this what it is you have for us as we continue a life of discipleship with you. And God, I pray on behalf of everyone here that we will see that you will give us opportunities to share our life with you with others, in our schools, in our work, in our families, on the street, wherever it might be. I pray that you'll give us those opportunities and give us grace to step into those even imperfectly. Holy Spirit, Prepare the way. In Jesus' name. Amen.